After getting into a pretty heated argument with multiple people in a 40k discord about how strong the Tyranids actually are, I feel like I have to make this just to show how ungodly powerful the precursors of the Flood are in the Halo books and just how out of their realm the Tyranids actually are. Sadly, we have way more concrete origins for the precursors in Halo, but the origins of the Tyranids in the 41st millennium are still fascinating. So we will go over the Tyranids first and give them the credit they deserve before I make them sound like kids in a sandbox and claim Halo superiority. I feel like the best place to start with the Nids is the scale of 40k versus Halo. We know that in 40k it's said that multiple Tyranid bioforms have weapons that use a material not found in this universe, that's supposed to say galaxy, which implies extragalactic origins. It's also directly said that the Pharaoh Speacon essentially called the Tyranids to this galaxy as they noticed the immense flash and turned course towards the Milky Way. Thanks, Barabas Antioch. The Tyranids are a hive mind, unlike the precursors in Halo, so the entirety of the Tyranid race, across all of its bioforms and all of its tendril, are technically one creature. Each tendril is given a degree of autonomy dependent on the different needs of the hive mind. If you need to just steamroll everything, send in a tendril like Leviathan or Behemoth. If you want to ensure you won't be taken out of the galaxy, you send in High Fleet Tiamat to create a bastion and defend it viciously. On top of all this, most Psyker powers are completely useless when the Nids are around, since they have a thing called the Shadow in the Warp, which is essentially just TV static playing at max volume in the heads of every single living creature. This combined with the singular intelligence of a predator who's got a near unlimited gene bank to pull from, as well as at the minimum one galaxy's worth of biomass. To 99% of the beings in the Milky Way in the 40k setting, the Nids are the ultimate threat. The Necron and certain other very very rare cases do exist where the bugs just won't bother, but the Necrons are the exception not the rule, as they are essentially coming back to an old save game because there was a new game update. 10th edition patch notes probably look like a massive wall of buffs for the Nids. They still aren't the meta build. They could be beaten regularly. And I know the GW likes to imply that we just don't hear about Tyranid victories, but we should at least be hearing about entire systems going dark. We have the literal Primarch of Accounting, and we don't hear about the countless worlds falling that most certainly should be affecting the accounting. As far as 40k is concerned, the Tyranids are essentially the perfect organism. There is nothing even close to it except for maybe the old ones. But with the old ones, they created life, whereas the Tyranids simply alter life. The Tyranids essentially have a base template for each job that needs to be done, and each bit of customization is done on the fly as needed. The best example I can come up with is the Toyota Helix. You can put a howitzer on the back, you can put a heavy machine gun, attach an anti-air rig, all of this while being damn near indestructible. The average Tyranid bioform is more fragile than a Helix, sadly, as setting them on fire or crushing them usually means their heart stops beating, and they can't drive themselves to the mechanic. So now onto the meat and potatoes of the video, the actual reason I made this whole thing, and uh, I'll just come out and say it now. The precursors in Halo are the closest thing to a god that we see in the entire setting. We don't know when they first came into being, and how long it took them to evolve or ascend to the point that they're at now, but what we know for certain is that they have reached such a mastery of every domain of science that they can't be called anything short of omnipotent or omniscient. They can alter not only their own physiology to a point where they can physically choose what lifestyle they would like to live and where and when, if they want to live a primitive hunter-gatherer lifestyle on a star that physically could not form this late after the Big Bang, they can do that just by thinking. They literally create and warp matter just by thinking, and it's all using this thing called neural physics, literally mind science. Using this neural physics, they connected multiple planets, multiple systems, and multiple galaxies together, just by thinking. And that's the more tame of their achievements. We know that they created multiple devices that act as semi-sentient cloud storage devices, the biggest and most well known of this being the Domain. The Domain is actually very similar to the Warp if you take out the gods and demons. We know that the Domain is a vast repository of information outside of the understanding of most living things, and even species that can't grasp what the Domain actually is can use it and delve within its infinite depths. Specifically the Forerunners, who despite not knowing what the the domain was, or who the precursors actually were, or their legacy for nearly 10 million years, had managed to use the domain and base their entire culture around it. 
The forerunners at their technological zenith, which was 10 million years ago, not the 100,000 years ago that the books and the video games imply, we know that it's 10 million years ago because the librarian outright says in the third forerunner book that a veil had been put over certain technologies as far back as 10 million years ago, when the precursors allowed themselves to be defeated. That's enough on the forerunners for this video, I'm gonna try and focus on the precursors now. We know for certain that the precursors could choose how they live their lives from any tech level to any physical form. So how are we supposed to believe that them chilling in a jar as soup would be any different to them living a life as a eukaryotic life form or as bacterial sludge. This doesn't even bring up the fact that if they can think stuff into being, they would be able to alter their perceptions of time by creating a near infinite point of mass to live out relative infinities of time, or they could do the exact opposite and think away the mass to bring gravity to such a small point that it wouldn't even be a problem. The forerunners, no matter how advanced they were, could not hope to actually kill the precursors. In my personal opinion, the precursors allowed the forerunners runners to think that they had won, since for a species as old and omniscient as the precursors, what is another 10 million years of slow decay and madness, allowing the forerunners to completely wipe themselves out? All of this, by the way, is because the omniscient precursors told the forerunners that they weren't good enough and that humanity had been deemed more worthy. All of this is to say that the precursors knew this would happen, since they had tried countless times before and countless eons to create the perfect inheritors. The forerunners and the humans are literally two different variations of the same species. The precursors had tried just before Forerunners and Humanity with the species called the Inheritors, so we don't know how long this game has been going on. Back on track, the Forerunners quote-unquote destroy the precursors and they quote-unquote corrupt and become the Flood, which is a hyper-intelligent assimilating biomass thing. Think of the Tyranids if the Tyranids were significantly dumber. Unlike the Tyranids who are one sole intelligence, the Flood is more than capable of breaking itself into multiple different nodes, for a lack of a better word, with grave minds and key minds. Grave minds being essentially hyper intelligent and key minds being damn near omniscient. We know that during the Forerunner Flood Wars, right before the firing of the Halo Rings, the Flood had actually reached the levels, or at least was starting to reach the levels, of the pre-war precursors of over 10 million years ago, with the former gifts of the precursors being turned on their failed projects. The star roads that used to connect planets and star systems together had begun to be used as weapons, with the star roads physically coiling around forerunner planets and systems, crushing them without having to expend any of their biomass. Then, the Flood allows the forerunners to fire the rings, and even lets them understand how bad they messed up as they do it. We know that the forerunners realize at the last moment that the domain, the thing that they had based their entire society around, was a living structure in the galaxy that would be destroyed upon the firing of the halo array. All of this just goes to say that the forerunners, who are the most quote-unquote advanced outside of the precursors in the entire setting, couldn't beat them, not even at their true technological zenith. While most races in 40k don't even have AI, the precursors in the Flood and Halo can corrupt any AI that they choose with the disease known as the Logic Plague. One grave mind, which keep in mind isn't even the fully evolved form of the Flood, was capable of corrupting the single strongest AI ever constructed within the galaxy. Mendicant Bias. The single grave mind pulled Mendicant Bias into a different reality or dimension or maybe just a void pocket and spent 30 years essentially explaining the true history of the galaxy, which I'm assuming went something like this. Look around, look around you. Look at this. We created this. This didn't exist before we were here. Look around at the square. I promise you right now, we did this. Doesn't matter what anybody says. They could say it's disrespectful. They could say it's this and that. And that. Everybody's within, everybody's within the rules. Everybody's doing their thing. All we are is proud and passionate. And all of this is only if they decide they don't want to vibrate your brain until it explodes, which is something they do. I think nobody gives the precursors credit. We only know about the ones in our galaxy and a couple nearby ones, with the large and small Magellanic Clouds as well as Path Cathona as confirmed galaxies the Precursors have or do exist in. If they're so masterful, they would be all over the universe and would allow a single galaxy to become a plaything for bored gods. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. I can do a part two to this if you want. I wrote a whole script about how the Flood encompasses almost all aspects of chaos. I just really don't know if it would fit or if it would even be a good video. But I've got the script all made, and uh, if you do want to see it, just let me know. Thank you.